Welcome to the podcast. Glad to be here. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing pretty good. How yeah. you doing? You want to introduce yourself to everybody? Uh, what, what do you think your intro would be? I'm, I'm blanking on exactly what to say. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Bob fucking place. That's the name. Uh, what is your middle name? My middle name is Martin. Martin? But, uh... BFP, baby. <laughs> BFP? BMP. I like them both. Yeah. So you're... The manager, the yeah, MC. I'm, one of the, I'm one of the guys that runs the Laughing Skull Lounge. Okay. Um, you know, run the shows, also perform there. You know, everyone at the Laughing Skull, everyone that works there is also a comedian that's performing there, which is cool. <clears throat> um, I've also made some films and skits and little silly Instagram videos, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've definitely seen it. Um, right. What's some of your films and your work? call for everybody now. Um, so, American Dirtbags, which you're in that film. I happen to be in that one. I do get a screenshot message from somebody every once in a while saying, is, is that you, David? And it's like on their big screen in their living room watching right. me talk about funny shit at a, the coolest little place. What was that place yeah, called? Yeah, that's the Bone Garden Cantina. That place is amazing. I went on a first date there uh, really? a few weeks ago, actually. Oh, wow. And just to kind of follow up after we had gone. And so it was pretty cool. Fuck yeah. So what are you working on? Um, Well, right now I'm just working on making little silly Instagram videos. Um, And that's occupying most of my time when I'm not just doing straight stand-up as far as that element of it goes. And it's great. I'm having a very good time doing it. It's fun, you know, just sort of going around, guerrilla shooting. Um, You know, I will like write a piano song or I guess I'm playing on a keyboard but uh, you know write lyrics to it to go out and shoot the video it's very fun it's amazing I, I every single video you watch as soon as it's out I got post notifications on I'm watching it right I'm sharing it I'm laughing my fucking ass off oh, and everybody man. else can can relate so much I mean it's, it's right. real it's, it's a <laughs> real beautiful depiction what's been the uh, hardest one to make so far the hardest one to make they're all kind of have their own challenges right because i'm not getting any permits or anything but i'm also not making any fucking money out of this and this is like literally just youtube and instagram and facebook so it's like whatever but uh the hardest one was probably six flags because six flags was hot as hell And, like, Six Flags is expensive, so we had to buy a ticket. And, like, I bought, you know, two tickets. Another guy came along, bought his own ticket. Thank God. (laughs) Just fucking expensive as shit at that place. yeah. (laughs) And then we had to get it in that day and get out, so there was, like, a lot going on. And, obviously, we were a little bit nervous because we probably shouldn't be shooting there. Are you not allowed to shoot? Well, you know, the thing is, I have a suspicion that... Uh, most people are incompetent and don't give a fuck about the job they have. And if you th- think of that as you're doing things, it's like no one says shit and like no one gives a fuck about fucking anything. And, and, and if they do, most of the time, like maybe one time can I ever recall in all of my guerrilla shooting, you know, which goes obviously beyond just these new videos that I'm making, only one time has anyone ever been like, hey, what are you doing here? Let me see a thing. And it was behind the Whole Foods while I was making American dirt bags. Uh, was it the Whole Foods? Um, In Buckhead? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured. That's right. The way no, it's it. Fresh Market. That's where we were. Fresh Market? Yeah. But that's neither here nor there, I guess. So you got one person who cares about their job. Just a little bit. Well, and I don't think that guy cared about his job so much as he was being an asshole and was like the manager, <laughs> you know? I mean... Like, I I just feel like because most people are, mm, you know, half-assing it, they don't fucking care. They're like, they see something like, I don't know, whatever, you know? And I'm, it's not like I'm showing up with the crew. I've got like a little camera where these things are very fast, you know, very quick. Um, it's just basically a run and gun kind of a thing. And that makes it fun, you know? I love it. It's so much fun to, to write these songs, you know, because they're just so silly and so, like, you know, just sort of 
make it fun, having a good time, you know, and hopefully, uh, it seems like I've gotten a decent amount of positive feedback, obviously there's been a little bit of negative feedback, Ooh. but I don't fucking care. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I yeah. I don't give a shit, man, like, g get the fuck over it. If, if you're upset about a silly video where I'm like literally doing cartwheels and clearly fucking joking, Am I telling the truth? Sure, but I'm also just joking, like, chill the fuck out. Like, what are we doing? This isn't investigative journalism, okay? This is a silly... It could be, but yeah. It's not, it wouldn't be, <laughs> I have no interest in that. I'm just trying to make funny videos. That's as far as it goes. Just so happened to live here and I, you know, just am inspired by the city. I love Atlanta, you know? I've lived in Atlanta for a while and it seems like, um, you know, I have no interest in going anywhere else, and it's, it's fun, I kind of, it's just a fun little city to pick on, and for the most part, people can take it, and then some people get upset, and then, you know what I mean, not far and few between, though, but it's happened, and I'm just like, whatever. Whatever. Not my problem that you're all upset about some city. If it makes you know. feel this way, then what's yeah. the same about you? Yeah, exactly. That's what I think about like, and then when I put also, content out that's maybe a little questionable. It's like, w w w what was triggered inside of you? Why did mm -hmm. you invoke that reaction from just a simple post? Right, because I'm video. certainly not trying to upset anybody. I'm just trying to make people laugh, right? And if you and some people get upset, like, but but then again, I don't even really know how deep that ratio goes because I do not read the comments. I don't feel like it. Like, you don't? No, because it's there's. You don't let respond to them? I mean... Mm -mm. Because yeah. people will, will pro DM me and ask me questions and I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'll talk to you like that, but I don't like putting it in this public forum because it's like... Well, it just could cause anxiety if I was like thinking about what other people were thinking and then I feel like I wouldn't be pure enough to do just whatever I think I should do, you know what I mean? That's I don't want to... I want to be influenced by as little as possible as far as people's comments, you know, so I'm not reading them. I'll see them, but I'm not, like, going through it, like, but if it happens to come up when I look at it, you know. And I think that that is helpful for, for me personally, you know, because, because I'm not, like, thinking about what other people might think. Yeah, outside of, like, I hear that a lot, honestly. Some of my favorite podcasters mm. live by that same principle. Mm. Joe Rogan, Aubrey Marcus. Gary Vee yeah. said they won't even fuck with it, they'll just put it out. And then well, right. Once it's maybe out, it's acknowledge dead. it for like the first hour, all the comments, and and then just let it go. I feel like once it's out, it's it's done. It's done. And 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 especially with how the internet works, it's like sometimes I'll follow somebody and then be like, oh, what's up? And I'll kind of retroactively look through their page. But most of the time, once you're following them, it's like the, you see the post the one time, and that's it. And you make your little comment, you like it or not, and then that's you watch it once. So it's like. You know, that's also why I'm not like too deep into like really high quality production value because like, what are we doing? You're gonna, this is gonna be 60 seconds. You can see it once. You like it or you don't like it. Either way, I'm moving on, and making another one. You know, I love it. I and love it. You too. make so you make fun. the right video that mm -hmm. hits the right person, the right set of eyes, see it, and the next altar of your future mm -hmm. could could manifest from that. Potentially, I mean, I'm not thinking that deeply about it like that necessarily, but um, I think it's fun to do and it's not something that I have to obsess my life over, you know? Whereas, like, you make a movie and you have to, like, obsess your life over it. I mean, I almost died. I didn't almost die, but I called the ambulance twice because I was, like, having a panic attack while I was making that movie. Are you fucking kidding me? And then it's, it's just, uh, it, you know... <laughs> It's just insanity. So, but this isn't that. This is really, this isn't like causing my life super stress or anything, you know. I'm just kind of casually doing it. I'm with it. And I, I like So how many better. have you done? Mm, I think six. Yeah. So I did, uh, sort of the OG one was um, Little Five Points, which I did years ago. And I was like, oh, I'll just put this out on Instagram. I had never posted it on Instagram before. And people seem to like it, so I was like, oh shit, I could probably do that better than I did it seven years ago. And so then I did the East Atlanta one with the intention of... The, the first new one you did? The first new one I did was the East mm -hmm. Atlanta one, and it was, uh, 
but it, the intention was that I was going to continue do continue doing it. That uh, the thing that made me want to do more was the little five video. So I already knew I was going to do more, but I made that one, and that one did very well. <laughs> you know, that one had some people that were a little upset for sure. You know, but. Uh, you know, whatever, man. I'm not trying to upset them, but I'm also not letting their negativity upset me at all. Like, <laughs> I'm not like, that's where I made the decision to not read comments. Was I was like, ooh, ooh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 I'm gonna stop even looking at this. I don't even want is, to know is that, that mostly on Facebook? Those kind of comments? No, I don't know, because I took Facebook off my phone. So I posted on Facebook almost like a. Uh, Second, just like to pick up the excess, but to me, I almost when I I feel like Instagram views, YouTube views are a little more. Um, I don't know. I just feel like there's less Russian bots on those things, whereas on Facebook, it's like who's even watching these? Are you even really engaging? You know. But I put it out there just because. But uh, so I don't know. I haven't read. It's those really comments. all about what you follow. Is what you see. Is that, so, yeah, well, I, I don't read those. Your Facebook feed all. probably just sucks. Mine does. Mine's mm. terrible. I, oh, really? I unfollow people every time I get on the feed. Really? Just to clear out the bullshit. Because I went through, I was at like 3,600 friends and added like a thousand people when oh, I was wow. running for office that I didn't really know or kind of knew. And, mm. and so that junked up my feed, man. I did that and I liked a bunch of people's pages. And so I've been having to go through retroactively unliking and unfollowing just to clear it up. Wow. So my Instagram feed definitely has the content that I expect to see. I like sure. to see from the people. That and that's I how I see. feel about Instagram as I well. I put a lot of time like, into I just, it. I took Facebook off my phone because there was too much like negativity I was witnessing a lot. And I was just like, I don't know, man. I, so I took it off. So I only have it on the computer, so I'll log up. But I, so I don't know. I haven't read any of those comments at all. I haven't read a single Facebook comment. The comments I saw were on Instagram and just at first, and then I don't, I was like, all right, fuck it. I don't want that making me anxious, you know, or something. I just want to yeah, put out what see, I think You don't and, see the, the, the potential of finding new jokes in the comments, creating new jokes, continuing the conversation, engaging your audience, acknowledging your audience, well, which is really that's the most true. important. Yeah, Just yeah. Just a like on the comment. I mean, I know it that's might kind of, it might distort your creation, mm. your perception of what you need to create these videos purely, but acknowledging your fans, your audience that's is interesting. the number one thing I recommend. Acknowledge everybody. It's like my, my number one principle. Really? Absolutely. Okay. And especially, especially the bullshit, you know, it just right. acknowledge it and let it go. Like, I got this guy messaging me now, and he's a buddy, he's been around Atlanta for like 10 years or so, and he's just coming at me, like, about Trump, and about one of these memes I posted, and I'm like, bro, you're not even asking questions, you're just like looking for a reason to spout shit off and get acknowledged by me, and so... I am. I have been acknowledging him, but very funny. Really, with, with just questions right back. So, so, but I, I feel like I don't want to engage like negativity because I just don't want that negativity in my life. I, I do feel. I agree, like, and especially in comments, I only right. like to engage the positive. So yeah, maybe maybe I could do that and engage the positive. You know, because um, I see what you mean. Like yeah, yeah, that's that's nice to engage that. I just. The negative comments, the way I'm engaging it, is just by not stopping making these videos. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> keep fucking keep making it. these fucking videos. So I, like, love, I love the tunes. So I think that's probably one of the best parts is is the song and the lyrics. Yeah. Attached. I mean, everything is, all the references are so accurate, but without the words. Right. Really, what is it? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it actually would be pretty funny on mute. Um, I just... Well, the bucket one is the is 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 just it's it's probably my favorite. It puts everybody on blast, right? It's so good. I, that's why I reposted that one. I usually keep my shit pretty wholesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck shit ass. And your video, I was just like, you know what? This has got to be right. People need to know this and see this be made aware. <laughs> At least it's not broke, hey, man. <laughs> right. I mean, it's so much fun for me to write songs, and it's so much fun for me to write silly songs in particular and jokes, you know. 
because it's like I just feel like uh, I might be saying some like intense shit, but also I'm like, do you need it? Like I'm like clearly. It's like, like the Six Flags, man. Yeah, sure. yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that? No, but yeah, uh, dude, it's oh like the Six God. Flags, man. It's like a dirty. <laughs> Atlanta accurate oh, version. That's so fucking funny. It's good, dude. Right? Oh, but you maybe a cane. Ooh. Well, in the uh, Buckhead video, I have a cane. Yeah, yeah, you and do. Yeah. And, and, but I'm trying to switch it up for like various videos, like what each one I'm you're doing, doing, without once again being. You know, I mean, I don't want it to not be fun. So I don't want it to like be stressing me out. That's um, the whole point of doing it. It's that fun, right? Time. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess so. It's just the well, awareness, the, of course. well, right, right. But the to me, it's almost about like having something that is a project. I like to have a project that I'm working on, but that isn't like it's over fast. Like I just so it'll be like a start to finish. Two weeks is how long it takes me to do one of those. And I can do it faster, but I don't want it to obsess my life. You know, um, I am thinking about doing more cartoons and stuff though because I could easily do that but you know I, the videos I'm uh, very happy about yeah know? yeah they're so much fun so I want to ask what's next but let's actually take a step back and okay. go more of your background where were you sure. born where did you grow up what's your story oh, okay so um, I was born in Rochester New York and uh, when I was two years old my parents were poor, and when I was two years old, uh, my mom joined the Marine Corps. Um, and then my family, you know, moved around with the Marines. I lived in Okinawa, Japan from when I was seven till I was 12, wow. which is when I moved to um, Georgia. And then uh, I grew up from that point, which was like sixth grade, through now, uh, well, sixth grade through like high school was I lived in uh, Lawrenceville, and then uh, you know I don't know I, now I live in Atlanta. <laughs> I get uh, middle high school. I went to Creekland and uh, Collins Hill High School. Okay, bet yeah, I'm from over Collins Hill. Yeah, Gwinnett. I was born in Gwinnett. Oh right. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah. So yeah, that's where I went to high school. I'm. Um, 35 next week. There we go. Right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Happy almost birthday. Thank you. Um, as far as creatively, started doing stand-up when I was 15. Um, I met the owner of The Laughing Skull when I was 17. When I was 15, I was also doing acting, got a couple acting gigs. Also went to my first film festival with a short film. A lot of stuff started when I was 15. And this year, that's all 20 years ago. So like... Started in a first band because I played in a band called Swank Sinatra for 11 years Ooh, and we tired toured the uh, East Coast um, Put Swank out of Sinatra. how many I think we put out four or five Records like couple records couple EPs. Okay, shoot some music videos and stuff um, And then you know like I, I, I made a bunch of skits and I've made short films and things so uh I don't know, I guess that brings us to date. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a little bit. Yeah, there might be something I'm forgetting. A little bit more sprinkle it throughout it. Um, Could be. Well, I mean, like, been doing, you know, there's just a lot of performing of those various things. So you've been with the Skull since you were 17? No, but I met Marshall the owner when I was 17, so I've known him for that long. I got the job at the Skull because uh, he just called me one day and was like, hey, would you come, like at first I was making skits for him for their YouTube ch channel for like advertisement. I said, hey, would you uh, wanna just work for me doing that? And I was like, yeah, obviously, clearly I'd like to do that. And then I've been working there since then, you know. Um, which was seven or eight years ago. Wow. And I love it, and I made the movie through them, and there's comics, you know, that come in from that, that were like headliners that came in to be in the film and whatnot. So much fun. Also, the most stressful thing in the world, but 
It was fun. I'm glad I did it, I guess, but I mean, it's like, I feel like that film is very much so like my film school because when I make my next film, it is, I learned so many lessons from powering through and making a feature film Hell yeah. that taught me how I would, what I would do differently, and it's a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, Give tons of three. So, smaller cast, right? We had like a hundred so different many. people in that fucking so movie. So many people. So the many movie. people. There were also 90 locations. Excuse me? There were 90 locations in that film, right? And it was like, it was absolutely insanity that I thought I could do it, and I did it because I was so stupid. I don't think I could do it again because I would know I would know, you know, um, you just don't need that uh, much. Right, 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 right. And, you know, there was tons of things I shot, like, maybe a third of it on real Super 8 millimeter film, which was stupidly expensive and shouldn't have done that. You know, uh, there were various, it, there, it was everything I ever wanted to do, and I put it into one thing and uh, could have used the money in a wiser way by having, you know, Three locations, cast of like eight to ten people max, if smaller, even better, but still keeping it a nice story, you know. Um, and I mean, that would be the, the big two right there. And then also uh, hiring a recognizable actor, I think, would be something to spend money on. But also, it's just a total crapshoot and a fucking complete gamble, you know, so it's, it's like, you never know. And most of the time, you're not hitting zero, double zero, making a movie, you know what I mean? Like, especially now, because there's no real room for it, really, you know, I mean, there's tons of it, but it's almost like, it's like, you know, there's just more to sort of get through, maybe, you know? What do you mean? Meaning, there's so many more independent films that are streaming that it's very easy for yours to be just lost in the fucking mix, right? Mm -hmm. So, you've got to, like, advertise it somehow. And, man, to truly advertise something like a movie, you need a lot of fucking money. <laughs> you need a ton of money to do that. Just that part, you know? So... Just the advertising part. Just the advertising part after you've fucking already spent a ton of fucking money making the film, you know? Um, so... But I... I mean, I'm fucking still writing things, so we'll see. But right now, I'm... Once again, I'm, I'm not trying to kill myself. I'm just trying to make these little music videos, you know, these little silly music videos, and just stand up as much as possible. What, uh, tell me about the stand up. Okay, what do you want to know specifically about it? Just what's, like, uh, what's your style? What's so, your career been like? <laughs> well, so the style now, I guess, has just evolved, and I feel like it's, um... I feel like I just am being, uh... I don't know, it's, it's aggressive to some extent, I'd say. You know, it certainly can get a little bit animated and a little bit, uh, some energy that goes into it. I sell these things, which are just, I'm saying ridiculous things is basically what it is, and most of the time to the crowd in a crowd work kind of thing. Although I feel like there's, a, there's some of it that's improvised, but a lot of it is just like, people say the same shit when you ask them questions, <laughs> you know, so. But that's fun, you know? I'm, I'm trying to be, I try to push it until the wheels are like about to fall off every single time I go out there. My goal when I go out there, and I don't always accomplish it, but I feel pretty, I feel like I do accomplish it most of the time, which is I try to push it until the wheels are about to fall off, right? They're shaking, they never do fall off, but the, they're definitely shaking the audience. I want them to feel like, okay, the wheels are about to fall off, but I trust that we're in the right hands right now. 
And sometimes I betray that trust. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Didn't mean to betray you. Sometimes we go right off the track, man, and just like start barreling down a fucking mountain, you know? <laughs> What's but, that like? What's that like? Barreling down the mountain? It's various things that are happening, you know? Because I kind of look at stand up like you're riding, like surfing, right? Like you're, you, what? An ideal set is you catch the wave and you ride the wave all the way to the shore. You never fall in. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can fall off the wave, gotta catch another wave, you know? And, um... I like that. Yeah. And, uh, I think a lot of people think of it like that. I don't know that that was necessarily my idea, but I've definitely had conversations with people about that, so... It's in the ether, you know... Like, don't, I don't believe that's my quote, but that's definitely how I look at it as well. Um, because that's what it seems like. It seems like you're, you're, you you got to, like, sort of ride this thing and you got to figure out as you're doing it what's working and what's not working. And, and what's working is whatever's making them laugh. And what's not working is obviously what's not making them laugh. <laughs> so it's like, my point with that, though, is that, like, I truly don't believe that there's any wrong way to do it as long as they're laughing. If they're laughing, you're doing it right, regardless of what your style is, you know. And if they're not laughing, you're doing it wrong. Even if they're clapping. You know what I mean? Like, comedy, you're, you're making people laugh. That's what we're trying to do here. Anyway, not to say that people can't do whatever the fuck they want because they can, you know, and that's fine. But, um... Going for laughs. Going, going for laughs, laughs, and then you're riding those waves. I like and it's, that it's a lot. Laughs, not No, I want both. You want claps, yeah. I want both. I want, I want, uh, you know, I want laughs and claps. Okay. But I don't want... I want laughs and claps and O's and, like, I want a real emotional thing to happen. But, I mostly it's laughs is what I'm going for. And that's all... And so I'm saying just the most insane things to categorize, like, how I personally feel about my style, although I feel like it would be easier for someone else to describe it because I'm too um, <laughs> close to it, you know? Right. But I'm just saying outrageous things and with conviction, basically, you know? And, like, uh, I've, I weave in jokes about, you know, my family and my um, just you know, various things, I suppose, but just personal things, kind of. I'll tell a couple personal things, but most of the time, I'm just firing off and, like, uh, like, like, I can't believe what I'm saying kind of a thing, you know? Absolutely. Wow, this is coming out of my mouth and... But, like, aggressively about how, like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna fuck you kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, well, you know... I, I mean, I've seen you live probably yeah. 15, yeah, 20 times. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. So how would you describe me? Pretty spot on to everything you said. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, good. I guess I'm I, also uh, kind of close to it, but... Sure, but... Okay, it's I, real. It's, it's, it's raw. It's real and raw. There you go, that's good. <laughs> real, bro. It's not necessarily Uncut. real, though, because, uh, like, I mean, I'm just joking around. But right. I mean, it's like, it's really me, and that's, I just feel comfortable going out there and just going for it and trusting that I can talk funny, more or less. That's what's going on. Uh, and because of that, and I do it so often, bits have formed out of that, mm. you know, so how many people do you think that. you're in front of every week? Oh, I don't know. I've never thought about that. But it's like almost every night, like uh, maybe five shows a week at the Laughing Skull and then occasionally some other show, you know. Um, so, I don't know, the Skull Seat's 80. I'm not good at math, so I don't know why I'm pretending to do it in my head. Um, <laughs> 80 times 5. I don't know, five, 80 times 5, 400. 400, sure. Uh, we'll go with that. School and math and things like this were never my thing, so. <laughs> uh, just really going for the low hanging fruit is what we're going for here. Okay, I'm with it, I'm with it. <laughs> Give me that fruit. That's right. So, um, would you say people are sensitive? 
as a whole, sure. I don't feel like people have been too sensitive. I haven't experienced very much. Like, I don't feel like I'm offending anybody. You know, if I'm offending you, you truly cannot tell that I'm obviously fucking um, not, like, I'm joking, clearly, you know? Like, I, I, I don't know, though. Like, maybe, maybe I've offended people. I don't um, really ask to dwell. Oh, on yeah, that I don't know. Maybe. Probably. How about this? What are your personal, professional, and fitness goals? Oh, th there we go. My personal goal is to be the best person that I can be, you know? And I'm um, taking active roles in that by, like, I do yoga every day, and I quit drinking, and I don't do blow, and I'm, you know... Um, I'm still smoking, but I'm trying to quit smoking. I'm trying to actively think about um, how I'm affecting things. I want to be, you know, personally the best, like, husband I can be to my wife, you know, so she is in the forefront of, like, what I'm trying to... Um, I'm just trying to be a better person, and she is a lot to do with that, right? I guess. So, so that's what I mean. Uh, and then in my professional life, I just want to continue moving forward. And really, I'm just kind of like, see where it goes, see how far I can go with it, you know? And if where I'm at with it is as far as I can go, it's pretty fun. Like, I'm having a great time, I'm having a good life, but I mean, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing and continue you know, and, and as it grows, it grows, I guess, you know, or, or so just sort of take life as it comes at me, but be sort of guiding the ship in a direction, right? Might go off course, might find it, but always sort of with that goal in mind. Um, and then my fitness goals, well... I think one of my fitness goals is to quit smoking because I do power yoga every day and, you know, it would probably be better if I could breathe better, <laughs> you know, because it's all breath to movement and whatnot. And, um, but just to continue doing that, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm fucking very in shape right now. Certainly more than I was in American Dirtbag. Yeah, I mean, you I look mean, a lot better than... I, mean, I feel a lot better. I mean, I was very unhealthy at that point, and now the most unhealthy thing, which is very unhealthy, is the cigarette smoking, and I'm trying to get that out of here. Anyway, because, like I said, you know, 35, it's time to quit smoking, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I gotta... Uh, and it's so challenging because I fucking love to goddamn smoke. I fucking love it. And the vapes don't work. It scratches up my throat. And so it's like, just trying to old school quit. How long have you been smoking? Since I uh, was 17. So you, you do the math on that. I mean, almost 20 years. years. Yeah, almost 20. You know, so... I mean, like, probably the first time I tried a cigarette, I was like 13. But I, I, I consider... Smoking on a regular basis, 17 on, really 18 on once I could buy them, right? So there was like, I would, so I guess I, the first cigarette I had, I was like 13. And then every so often I would have one, and then by the time I turned 18, it was like a pack a day. And then it just it has never stopped. So it's like pack, pack and a half, two packs at the highest a day for fucking almost 20 years. So, uh, yeah. It's a lot of money, and it's also just like not doing me any favors, you know, um, mm -hmm. but definitely an addiction, right? I get it. <laughs> yeah. Sucks, but... Well, giving up alcohol for nine months yeah. is huge. It's such a big step. Right. Um, when I gave up alcohol for two and a half years, I started smoking kind of at the mm. beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, it was definitely replacing one substance for another and super difficult to quit. The vape helped me along with running. Right. Just going so, yeah. outside and forcing your lungs. I do yoga also like crazy. That's, and that's what it was with me was like doing yoga because I had tried to quit drinking in the past because drinking has been just a problem that I've had. Like, I mean, 
because I'll black out and then it's just like, I just am not in control and I don't like to not be in control. I don't like that feeling of that next day when you wake up and it's like, holy shit, what the fuck did I do? You know, so fuck that. I don't want to feel like that. Fuck that. But the times I tried to quit in the past, I went to AA and those things are so fucking depressing. And I was like, this ain't it either. This isn't going to work for me because it's so depressing hearing these people tell these stories that are just like, man, that's love. you need to be drinking right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, God, I love it. It's true. For real, though, like, they're so, their lives are You know are what you can use? Shit. Their lives are shit, and they're, like, hyper aware of it because they're all geeked up on fucking caffeine. Shitty coffee, you know? too, yeah. Whatever it is. And I just couldn't do that, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to do it without... I'm gonna do it because I believe that I have the willpower to do that without the help of anything else. I believe I can do it. But also I wanted to like get in shape so that I could kind of, you know, transition lifestyles basically. Mm. This one's so much better. I'm never hung over. I'm fucking, you know, very productive. So I'm into it. I love it, you know. And also the other factor of that is you know, a big factor in my life that's so powerful is the death of my dad. And um, he was worried about me because he saw me fucking when I was going hard. You know what I mean? There's nothing he could do about it. I was a fucking adult. But it's like, you know, I look back at that just like, oof, I see what you mean. Like, holy shit. Like, it was very dangerous. Could any minute could have died. You know, making bad decisions, getting arrested, which I had been arrested a couple times, you know. Um, and so he died, and, uh, we were very close, and so I would get drunk and get sad and all up in my feelings, you know, how, obviously, you've been drunk and up in your feelings before, you know, Absolutely. and you're not rational, and it's just really, um, it's, cold, it's, bro. it's, it's <laughs> fucked up, and, um, anyway, so I just didn't want that either, because that's not good for me, that's not good for my dad's legacy, mm. you know, no way, like, because he was fucking amazing, and so I don't want to be just constantly mourning. Now, once again, it was two years ago, so it's like, when he first died, I dove in head first, you know what I'm saying? And that's not going to cause, that doesn't solve any fucking problems, certainly not like that, right? Since then, I feel much, feel so much better about it, you know? I love that. Yeah, I think it's the best response. What you said earlier, when I said, "Yeah, you look good," you say, "Well, I feel good." Yeah, because that's the same thing for me. In right. This transition, losing forty pounds in five mm. months and sure. getting back in shape. It's uh, everybody's like, "Oh my God, you look!" And I'm right. like, well, really, it's I feel right. And people want to concentrate on the look, and it's yeah, cool. That's that's the outcome, but really the income mm. and what sure. what we're gaining. And, I love, what, so what kind of power yoga do you do? So I go to core power mm -hmm. uh, in various locations, just depending. Um, and I do yoga sculpt like every day. So it's like power yoga with weights. Fuck yeah. And it is no fucking joke. Fuck like yeah. it is, you are going to die. There's, and that's the other thing, that's why I want to quit smoking, because I'm in there sometimes just like, whew, I hope the instructor knows CPR, because we're about to fucking die, son, you are about to die. <laughs> but you, you got me? You got yeah. me? And they all do. It's what they say, I figure out, like, if you're going to have a heart attack in, like, a environment with a fitness, you're probably going to make it through. Someone's going to get to that 911, you're going to be, remember this is the point. Don't blow in their mouth for CPR, just chest compressions to the beat of staying alive, all right? So if you see me and I'm going down, assume. And then if it's working, you should be breaking ribs. You gotta pump it Oh, wow, hard. really? Yeah. Okay, I'll make sure I crack some ribs. So, <laughs> anyway, that knowledge is, it's good for everyone to know that. <laughs> so not mouth to mouth, just straight No to mouth chest. to mouth, what the fuck is that doing? Oh, thank, Nothing, thank didn't that always seem a little bit weird to yeah. you? Like, wait, what? A little but bit I thought, we inhale, like it's, there's a chemical change in what we're breathing out when we're breathing. So why is blowing in their mouth doing anything? It's not doing anything. There's food in there, it's lodging it deeper. And you're not doing anything, they're just dying because you need that blood, the oxygen to just be circulating through their blood into their brain is how you're keeping them alive. So I remember hearing announcements about that on the radio, like, yo, there's a new CPR. Like, do you remember hearing that? I used to play radio ads because it's like, 
the new CPR is saving lives because it's like that's what you need to do. So anyway, once I have a heart attack, and I will, I can. <laughs> Not if, that. when. Not if, when. <laughs> So, but, uh, yeah. So what are some of your most enjoyable bits, jokes to run? Um, hmm. I like, uh, I, I don't know, it rotates through them, right? So sometimes I'm feeling some, sometimes I bring things back from the past and I sort of lock into a thing that I'm doing for a little bit and then kind of move from there. I like it all. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I, there's, I don't think there's any bits I'm doing that I don't like. I just, I like going out there and going crazy, you know. That's the best, is just going out and just losing your fucking mind. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. It's pretty fun connecting with the crowd and Oh, I'm fucking with them, isn't it? I love it. I love it so much. It's so much fun. It's like, um, it's it's like having a magical power. Like you're a fucking wizard, you know, and you're sort of conducting this group of people, and and, and it's it's so much fun because it, laughter is so involuntary mm. that it's like you're. That's why it seems like you're like. Have magic powers, and you're like, you know, doing this to the room, and, and in a sense, you do, you know, you're like, it's it's so much fun. It's fun to like be in the moment and stay in the moment, which can be challenging, but is kind of what I try to do every time, all the time. Which, so to me personally, it can get kind of frustrating sometimes because I'll, um, maybe want to do some things and go out there and just like something catches my eye and then we're somewhere different and then the next thing I know I'm like damn I never even I never even did that one thing I wanted to do because I just went out and experienced the room you know so who were some of your inspirations um well, obviously, my dad was a big inspiration. He was a musician and whatnot, so growing up, he always had musical instruments around and things like that, and he was a songwriter, so that sort of been... And he, him and my mom were both, like, encouraged me to do whatever, so when I was 15 and wanted to do stand-up, I looked up bar, and, like, I feel like I found... The first one I did was at Eddie's Attic in 2000, and, um... So what do you like to do for fun? Um, um, well, I like to, you know, write these songs and things, and I like to, uh, go to the movies, um, what's your next song? Oh, well, I, I don't want to tell you that because I'm doing, uh, well, I just want to keep it under wraps because, you know, I, I want to be able to like, go there and film it. I haven't filmed it yet. Mm. And so I, I want to, uh, it, it'll be, I think it'll be good. I'm excited about it, you know. You never know. Who knows? Like, I'm just doing, like, what I think is funny and then hopefully other people like it, you know. But, uh, so I think, like, whatever video I'm working on currently is my favorite one. And then, you know, you put it out and start working on a different one. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go to the so place. So let's and let's go through the company. ones that you've done. You did East Atlanta, East Little Atlanta, Five Points, Little Five, Midtown, Midtown, Buckhead, Buckhead. Cheshire Bridge, uh, Six Flags, uh, Marta, and I also did a new East Atlanta one because. It got flagged and taken off of Instagram, so I re-recorded it and said, okay, here you go. You know, here's, here's a new version. Almost immediately, like, what are we doing? Right. Are, really? Is this really upsetting you that much? Like, how good is your life if this is uh, really upsetting you? Not good. No, your life is great, because what a fucking 
little problem to even be worrying about. Are you fucking uh, kidding me? That's nothing. You should not be worried. It shouldn't bother anyone at all. Any silly video anyone fucking makes. Like, are you kidding me? Your life is so good that you don't have any other problems than to worry about some fucking asshole singing about, you know, <laughs> whatever, anything. You know. I like the Marta one. The Marta one I was fun. The yeah, I rode Marta made. forever. <laughs> appreciate awareness being made. Uh, honest, honestly, uh, you know increasing awareness is one of the biggest facets, I think, of what you're doing. You know what's funny? is In a sense, it is. <laughs> but people have come up to me, that, uh, you know, because it's not like people are stopping me in the street all the time, but occasionally they are, right? Like, it, I've been stopped a few I'll times. I've stopped you people. in the street. Shit, how many times have well, we run into each other? Stop, but I'm saying, like, strangers out. have. Yeah. The, the feedback I've gotten from strangers is always very positive. Uh, because, well, I think that people are, you know, people making negative comments are keyboard commandos right. and not going to confront you in real life of course at not. all. And I don't buy it for a second, and no one has yet. And if they did, what's the plan here, bud? Were you gonna beat me up? That's gonna be bad for you. <laughs> That's gonna be real bad for real you. Bad. Because I'm not, like, are you fucking kidding me right now? I'm literally joking around. I'm joking. We're joking, and if some video is upsetting you to the point where you're trying to, um, <laughs> you know, well, I feel like if it's upsetting you at all, it's like, Come on, there's bigger fish to fry out here to be upset. That, that I'm sure you're, you, if that's upsetting you, imagine what else is upsetting you, because this world's pretty fucking upsetting, you know? Facts. So, uh, but I haven't had too much, I mean, none at all. Zero, like, confrontations in real life. Um, and, because once again, what's the plan? What, are you gonna beat me up, really? No, that's not what we're doing. Because we cannot fight people. Violence is not okay. So it's like, <clears throat> you know. I agree. Let's pull up a video. Okay. Bob fucking place. I'm happy that you can have fucking in your username and it doesn't get it. I am too, right? And it's like, yeah, you know. So, uh. Alright, so what, what do we want to say? Marta. Well, uh, let's go to Midtown. Okay. Come on down to Midtown, baby. Gentrified, but still so shady. Can't find a free place to park and might get murdered after dark. Gonna get a car boot, maybe bang a prostitute. Midtown's where it's going down. Skyscrapers and big high rollers, white ladies, lot dogs, oh, and shoulders. Margaret, that's and literally my, my old vlog. Thank you, I've just seen all this. Cheers, where you go to sleep, Herbie's at 11th Street, Midtown, where it's going down. Hey, let's go to the high news here on the bar. Hey, let's go to the You look so fucking happy and excited, too. Yeah. Just being silly. Oh my god, it literally gives me life. Yeah. All these videos. Oh man, I, I just, I need more. <laughs> yeah, um, people seem, I mean... The, they're all people seem to like them. I mean, they're not, uh, you know, I love them. I, I think it's super fun. It's fun to do, and I'm being silly. And the song things. sounds really good, too. You like, like the songs I'm I really, I really, I'm a Extremely hey, impressed. Play out in Buckhead Dang. today with the so pros and polos only drink IPAs a great place if you're rich. Or a gold digging bitch. <laughs> let's go and play out in Buckhead today. And when we get there, let's, let's go, go right to Lincoln Square. Square. We can ball at the mall when you blow a millionaire. And all the whores they get merch in the Buckhead Church where they pray about where awesome. they left yeah, their underwear. Great. 
and a bro can be a bro, and it's not at all absurd. Drinking, biting, football, chasing, tail, and hips to turd. They can bang a say down at Johnny's hideaway, where they won't be getting censored when her music, the N-word. Botox handles and so socks make rooms and sushi. DUIs, mochus, trust funds, and some rupees. The bars used to never close, and it was legal. But that all they did when Rizzy really was murdered to people. <laughs> Such a magical land, filled with ass hats. The douche factor is high, <laughs> but at least it's not broken. God, the timing is literally <laughs> perfect yeah. by all of it, man. It's a roller coaster that you're going through. Yeah, yeah. And feeling and seeing it, especially if you're from Atlanta. Right. I think Mr. Atlanta and any and all people associated know like this is this is culture. This is this is real. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm, you know, trying to just tell the truth, right? But I'm also I'm joking, you know, and I, like and it's also got to do with a lot about like, um, it, it's fun to, cause I could make a longer song and have it on IGTV, but I think it's fun having the constraint that it's like a jingle. It's like a one minute jingle. Like, and I go through multiple parts and I pack a lot in there, you know? And that's fun. It's, it's almost like putting a puzzle together, you know? You need to put it on iTunes. Oh well, but I'm gonna you need do. to have it on all streaming platforms. I I think just a sixty second song. Yeah, uh, you can download and play. Well, what think I was about it, bro, do, like for sure. Well, I've I've thought about that. So after, so I'm gonna do this. I started this maybe a couple months ago, and I can do two a month. I'm gonna do it for a year, and then I'm gonna release that as a record called uh, Atlanta Bangers. But it'll also have other things because, like, I'm I'm gonna also kind of go OTP and hit on some shit like Cobb and like whatever. Oh, bro, I want to help make fun of outside counties. Right. I'd love to. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're definitely hitting outside counties and like you know I, I'm I'm doing it until I'm just gonna keep doing it. The plan is just to, I'm just gonna keep doing it. So I mean I'm sure I won't do it until I'm 80, but I'm gonna do it for at least the next year. 79. You know? Well, you, you see what I mean? I'm, 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 I don't know exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. how long I'm gonna do it, but at least for a year, and then we'll see. We'll go from there. But I'm having a blast, and it's like, yeah, I just I, you know, I'm just trying. I'm trying to not be lying, right? I'm not lying, and also I'm joking, and you know, people take it however they want to take it, and I can't help that. But to me, it's funny. Is what I'm trying to do here. We're we're I'm joking around. Let's watch another. Okay. Um, what's this? Oh, this is a skit. He's currently hiring oh, douchebags just like you. Do it today and get a douchebag haircut. Hey, Have you ever been down near Cheshire Bridge? It's a part of town where you get to choose. No one needs to know what you can he filmed all this? So, uh, Damien Turner helps me film, and then just other comics help out with them? Okay. What do you film on? Uh, T2I. Right on. Season pass, there's 
guaranteed change. And a rat. So bring out the kids. Give it a try. You'll be glad you did. If you so like pink eyes, like put on some sunscreen, back up your bags. Let's all go down and tear up the town six flags. I feel. I feel. I'm happy. I'm very proud of all of these videos, for sure. I'm. Come I think on I'm down to East Atlanta, where we'll have some fun. Plenty to do. Look at you, the the boys and girls, so and everyone. A great place to take a first date in the sun or in the rain. I think I might play but this on the not video. Place sure. To find Let's see how long I stay with that one. at the graveyard, it's real hard to find cocaine. At the Glenwood, no one should find some. Okay. It's not at Flatiron 2 I love no the way white soul at the Earl <laughs> And just say no at Mary's and the Union So if you want some blow, the place not to go is East Atlanta Yeah! Definitely no cocaine here, definitely not Come on down to East Atlanta <laughs> Last one, fuck it. If you ride the Marta train, you're probably gonna miss your plane. The schedule's wrong and that's for certain. Every station smells like urine. Hope you don't need to get somewhere fast. Cause all the employees have their head up their ass. And maintenance issues are always dire. Lately the track has been straight up on fire. Let's play the chapter. If you don't want to miss your flight, just take an Uber instead. So true, dude. We all Atlantans, we go through this, especially going to the airport. It's like, it's yeah. its only job, right? Right. Its only job is to get us around, which it doesn't do. Yeah. And then its only other job is like, just get it's us to the, the airport. airport. Right. And then the train's gonna be delayed, like you're gonna step in poop. It's right. Like, right. Literally things <laughs> that have happened that you've seen. Totally. I mean, if I was you, I would tag. I would tag all these businesses and brands, bro. You get twenty tags per video. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So like each each post on Instagram, you can tag twenty different brands. Like the people, I would first off tag yourself, tag the people that help you film the video, and then start tagging those fucking places, man. Hmm. Interesting. You hit every fucking location, like. You I'm do gonna, that, it, it good, good or bad, right? Like, good or bad publicity is still publicity. Well, but and the it, only it, problem it, is, like, I don't, I feel like, I'm not trying to, people, like, reporting my videos and getting them taken down, which is just, like, Instagram's real tight. It's freedom so, of speech, bro. It There's is, no but, reason that that should be suppressed. Well, but it's a, it, it's a private business, and I respect that. I get it. I'm like, yeah, private business should be able to do whatever the fuck they want to do. You know what I mean? I agree with that. It is negatively affecting me, but I do my, have an overall belief that, like, yeah, a private business should be able to do whatever the fuck they want to do because it's, it's their business. You want to start a thing? Start your own business, you know? Okay. So I get it, but that is sort of part of the reason why I wouldn't or I haven't done that. Just because I'm trying to not get them to take it down. But once again, once people see it, you know, that's it. Although some you people get taken down, you just put it back up. Yeah. And literally just put up the same fucking video. Right. I wouldn't take the time to recreate a new masterpiece. Right. Put it right back up, bro. If that's your biggest fear. Really? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want them to like deplatform me or something, you know. It's not gonna happen, dude. These have become our mediums to express ourselves. Mm. They can't silence that. Mm. Go back through and read the terms and services. Right. I've read it. I've read it thoroughly. Right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't... Uh, but some of it's vague, right? Some of it's a little bit like, well, and if we decide, you right. know, it, so it's... But in general, they don't break any of the rules. You know? Maybe... And East Atlanta didn't break the rules either. 
technically it did because just the words I was saying was basically saying, um, well, <laughs> you couldn't tell that I, uh, you know, I don't know, they, they, I guess they didn't like it. It was too on the nose, if you will. <laughs> I mean, it might have just been one random person a little bit on the through. nose. On the nose. <laughs> literally, it could be that. Yeah, yeah and I bet it is. One fucking person. Yeah, and I, I bet it is, and you know, you never know who it is. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Who just cares? Just chop right. it up and do another. Right, right. Exactly. And upload the same one if that happens again. I would. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. Nice. So, what's next? So. I mean, like I said, I've got a couple in the chamber. I've written some songs. I'm writing lyrics to them, but I don't I, like. I don't want to announce it because I just want to sort of drop them as they come, so that like if I announce things that are coming up, people might. And I don't know that they would, but I don't want people to know I'm coming to film. <laughs> like I need to not have anyone know where I'm going to be because you know I don't think it's to the point where like that would happen. But I just want to get in the habit of not doing that because I don't want to risk the chance of being shut down. Because then it's like, fuck. Well, now I don't have a song for the, I don't I don't hit my mark of releasing it if I get shut down. Because then I have to start from scratch more or less. You know, I've got a couple piano tunes that I've written and recorded, but none of the lyrics. You know, I do it as soon as I post it. I start working on the next one. Mm. So what? Where do you find the inspiration to make the tunes? National music side of it. Um, I just played the keyboard a lot, and because uh, I'm writing a musical too, right? And I've been writing a musical wow. called The Adventures of Malamar Stown, The Mystical Jacket of Joy for... Say, say that again? The Adventures of Malamar Stout and The Mystical Jacket of Joy. The and Adventures it is of... Malamar Stout. Malamar Stout. And The Mystical Jacket of Joy. And so... I've been writing that on the piano for a while, and uh, I don't know, I just started doing this. It's not too challenging for me to write a, like, I'm not the best piano player, but, uh, like, I'm good enough to be able to make some chord progressions and write a song, right? So, and that doesn't seem, I enjoy doing it, so it's kind of, I, I'm just inspired by as well as I can play the piano and what can I do with that, you know? Musically, like I said, Frank Zappa inspires me, but I mean, it's nothing like that in the sense that it's certainly not like super intricate, you know, it's like core, it's like verse, bridge, chorus, you know, whatever, like it's, it's a minute long little jingle, so it's, honestly, you want me to show you like some inspiration that I've had? Can I look something nice. up? Uh, do you have YouTube on this? Absolutely. No password. Perfect. Where are we? Password. I'll show you some. I got YouTube Premium, bro. So do I. I'm on a family plan. Um, <laughs> so... We pay, it's six of us, and so I think $15, six twelve, so two fifty a piece. Per month. You should do the same. So... This is the kind of thing that uh, inspires me. jingles were from like the 50s 60s right and so I like those kind of jingles are sort of inspiration behind musically where the song is going and then inspiration so South Park is a guiding beacon in my life where when I'm making a joke or coming up with a lyric I think would South Park 
take it th- would South Park go further with this? Mm-hmm. Like would would I you know what I mean? Because they are a, a a pure beacon. Oh, that's what we were talking about before the break. Was I was gonna say we were talking about influences and Matt Stone and Trey Parker for sure are um they're just I like them so much because they believe the same thing I believe and and you know South Park came out when I was in seventh grade, so it's like, it might be, they may have influenced my belief in this, probably did, right? And here's the belief, is that either everything's okay to make fun of, or nothing is, right? So, everything is. So, then take it as far as you want, you know, and nothing is sacred. Mm. Nothing is sacred. So, that I guess is sort of main influence for these videos in general, and the music of them is inspired by, like, radio jingles. Like, 60s, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s radio jingles. I love it. Go not, not influenced by that I'm trying to copy them, but with that kind of a vibe. Of that kind of like a, you know, <laughs> that like sort of... Oh, God. Upbeat, silly, like, little jingle vibe, you know, and obviously I'm writing them all on my keyboard. In an era of negative news, it's a beacon of light, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Appreciate it. Oh yeah. I can't wait for the album to come out. Yeah, Atlanta Bangers. Atlanta Bangers. Yeah, dude. Bro. Atlanta Bangers. He said it's gonna be a 24 track. Yeah, I guess so. Right, whatever that is. So, um, and I might cap it off before, or a little bit after, just depending. But yeah, that's the plan. Why not? Just because, and really, the true reason behind that mainly is because I listen to it probably more than anybody, because I like them. So I'll, like, ride down the street on a fucking bird scooter. Bro, for people who in. want to learn quickly, like, about parts of Atlanta, yeah, just the audio, I think, will be huge. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's interesting, because people... And I'll show it to watch. people like that, like, hey, you don't have to watch it. Just... Here's what's going on there. And then they'll consume it, and then over and over and over. Right. Very cool. It's genius, man. You're a definite innovator, thought leader. Oh, well, thank you. I wasn't... I'm. Hopefully people think I'm funny. <laughs> You're also pretty funny. Right. <laughs> I appreciate it. Absolutely, yeah. man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. I had a great time. Let everybody know how they can find you. Well, on Instagram, I'm Bob Fucking Place. And, I mean, that's the best thing. So we'll see you there.